Hi everybody, it's Dr. Laura with Connect My Brain. Once again, we're coming in trying to give you some great information about what might be going on with your child. Have you ever noticed that certain behaviors are escalated and then it seems to calm down and then it creeps back in and then it seems to calm down. It's cyclic. It comes and it goes. Today's podcast, I want to kind of look at that type of a question. So I've been talking about primitive reflexes and trying to explain how far reaching they go. We've been looking at ATNR and handwriting. We've been looking at TLR and its input on gravitational security and Moro for the sympathetic nervous system. And I've also been explaining that things that are firing together time frames of when there is neurological development and neurological windows, when these windows are open, and if something is going on with your child's chemistry, that too can get wired together. So in the last podcast, we were talking about TLR extension was a bridge postural reflex that is not expected to inhibit until the child is about three years old. So the other maturation or developmental windows were gut up until age two immune system age three. So what might that look like if there's a primitive reflex like toe walking? What might that suggest for my child's gut and their immune system? Because the majority of your immune system is in your gut. So I thought, one of the ways that I could really help you understand the importance of this information, how far reaching development really is, I want to look at what's called biofilms. Now for the podcast audience, I literally have a picture up of what would represent a biofilm. Now, if you just go over to whatever internet search that you like, you could very easily just type in the word biofilms, B-I-O-F-I-L-M-S, and look at images. We will put this one up on the YouTube channel, Dr. Laura Hansen, so you could go back and you could look at it. But I'll do my very best to also describe it to you. But first, let's understand a little bit about what is a biofilm, because it is not just a pathological situation. We also have healthy biofilms. Have you ever, and this is going to get a little graphic, but you ever notice that you'll get like a film on your teeth if you haven't brushed your teeth? Well, that's a biofilm. So that scuzz that's on your teeth is a way for it to protect the enamel until you can get your teeth brushed. But obviously, if we left it there or chronically didn't brush our teeth, it would not be of benefit. Inside of the belly, in the, in the intestines, there's these little microvilli, little projections. And so I'm holding up my hands and I'm crossing my fingers over to show how close-knitted those little structures would be. And they are completely coated in a biofilm because they're a delicate little structure. And when we think of how our body innately produces acid to sanitize our gut so that the food that we eat is also sanitized, we want to also protect delicate structures. So we can have 
healthy biofilms, and we should, but we can also have unhealthy ones. And unfortunately, when the diet is off, so let's just, let's just imagine that we've got a, a diet that's high in sugar, high in complex carbs, high in um, may, maybe candies and cakes, uh, fast foods, you are creating an environment in your gut, okay? Let's say you're on many prescription medications. Those have to go get filtered through the liver as well. And that too, it puts a body burden on the system. That too can generate biofilms. We can have a lot of stress. We can have patterns of stress that have been laid down for so many reasons. If I had a Moro reflex that was still firing, then the sympathetic nervous system could literally get trained to just stay on all the time. And when that happens, we are alarming the brain. The brain is saying there is some kind of threat and we have to prepare for an attack. And when that happens, there is a shift in blood flow. The blood flow is diverted from the tummy and everything that's in the tummy. And it's shifted to the back of the brain. It is pulled from the front of the brain where reasoning occurs. And it's in the back of the brain to just be reactive, ready to fight or ready to run. And that's why we say that the sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight mechanism. Now, even something like that, even beyond the window of maturation can cause a disruption in the microbiome of the gut. And the microbiome, think of it as almost like the rainforest. It, or if you had, you know, a terrain of beautiful plants and, and it, you created an ecosystem where the, the soil was right and the plants were growing and thriving. I want you to think of your belly as, as an environment and it's meant to have good bacteria in it. In fact, they believe we have more bacteria, good bacteria, than we have genes. So that would say that this is very important to have this balance going on. And our thought life can absolutely disrupt our gut. How we live, our lifestyle, how we eat, how we drink, whatever we put in our mouth, not just that, what do we, uh, what do we stick in our body? What do we have stuck into our body? All of these events can generate biofilms in the gut. And there's a lot of other things that can, can generate as well. But I wanted to focus on this area today because I do, I, I hear parents say my, my child will act one way and then it will get really calm for a while and then it will disrupt again. And I can never put my finger on, has something happened? Well, let me explain this picture to you and I will do it also for the podcast audience. So we have this ecosystem. We have healthy biofilms which are going to have healthy substances to protect it. But when we have other things in our gut, like bad bacteria, heavy metals, um, yeast, anything that is not of the body, 
can come together to create its own biofilm. So what you see in the first picture is kind of like the town hall meeting. We're going to pull everybody in. We're going to start to build. We're going to start to manufacture the film. And then there is the growth phase. And literally what you can see in the picture is the, the development of what started off as using some adjectives for descriptive purposes, but almost like a small balloon, like a small water balloon. And now I'm filling the water balloon. Now it's getting bigger and it's getting bigger and it's multiplying. It's multiplying whatever is inside. And then it's mutating whatever is inside. It can be mutated. So there can be other species that we didn't even know. Now we have the detachment phase as if I have blown or, or filled my water balloon to the point to where it burst. What happens to the water that's in the water balloon that bursts? It goes everywhere. And that's what the detachment phase represents. It is a dumping. So we go from town hall meeting, everybody coming together to growth on a multiple scale level, and then we dump. And now what was, what was in that nasty biofilm is now going through the body. So what is that individual actually going through is they're actually going through like a bucket being tipped. So think of all the things that your child may be going through, or you know somebody whose child has gone through a lot. Okay, so let, let's, let's put a few examples. Maybe the history in it has ear, let's start even more to the beginning. Let's say it is a C-section baby, so it didn't get exposed to the good bacteria so that would mean, now remember, I'm trying to break down so that we can really begin to understand this firing together and wiring together. And this is leading us into what is now known as neuroimmune storms, things going on in the immune system during open windows of development firing and wiring together and why your child might be in a real state of crisis. Okay. These could be kids with pans and pandas. These could be kids with other autoimmune issues. These could be kids that you have just tried everything and nothing is regulating them. So starting back at the beginning, some possible red flags. And remember, you do not have to have every single one of these. You could have one, you could have three or four, but pay attention that this is in the history. Let's say it's a C-section delivery. That child was not exposed to mom's bacteria. So now they're already coming into the world with immune deficit. This is a baby that had colic. So the vagus nerve is getting this feedback pathway of dysregulation. Vagus nerve goes into every single organ of the body. It comes from the brain stem. It comes into all of the throat, the ears, the heart, the bronchi, everything in your gut, elimination, digestion, reproduction, everything is impacted by the vagus nerve. Children with ear infections, especially treated with antibiotics. Thereby, what we've done is we've completely disrupted the microbiome because first of all, most ear infections are not bacterial infections, they're viruses. 
and we put something in the body, it is not tailored to anything specifically. So it wipes everything out. And now you're back to susceptibility to what can be mutated, what can grow there, and usually generating dysbiosis, which is disruption in that microbiome. Maybe the child has had strep. Now we also have balance issues because even one round of an antibiotic can change the viscosity, the fluid in that vestibular system and change the feedback mechanism to the brain about where they are in space. And even things like that, situations where I'm changing the anatomy, like ear tubes, we're changing the anatomy. That is going to be a feedback mechanism to the body. And remember what we said in the last podcast, these are circuits that wire and fire together. And if one is off, typically others are off. Now we've also got eczema. We are a picky eater. We uh, are not able to pay attention and have brain fog. And we're carrying labels like ADD, ADHD, uh, anxiety. We're not sleeping. We have no endurance or we can't sit down. This is the possibility. This is the possibility of what I see in these histories. I go through these histories and I put little red flags and these are so common. The list that I just gave you, they're so common that our kids are going through immune situations during open windows of development, and they're not moving forward. And if it's not changed, if it's not changed, the child can get stuck. The child can also regress. So it's really important to understand the connection between the open windows of development and how the open window of development from your brain stem to your midbrain to your higher brain is also influencing how the immune system is going to mature and vice versa. If you're sick all the time, especially within those first three years of life, you're actually programming yourself to ill health. And we can change this. So what would we do for this? Well, one of the very first things we have to do is we have to do an assessment and see how far reaching has all of this gone. You know my style. I'm not going to give you a protocol to use over a podcast. That is not professional. That is not a, a high standard of clinical integrity. But I will tell you, if you get the right information, you can change any of this stuff. So for example, what do we do here and how would it influence this? We do functional lab testing. Well, what's the difference? Can I just go to my pediatrician and say, I want to do these tests? Well, it depends how your pediatrician practices. There are more pediatricians today that are more functional. What that word means is they're going to look at the real biochemistry of the body. If we're just getting a test because our insurance is going to cover it, the likelihood is you're not getting a functional test. Even people today that want to find out if their insurance company is going to cover a particular lab that we might order here at Connect My Brain, We've even heard the insurance company go, well, we would have paid for it if you let us talk to the doctor first. Our, 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 the way we do our labs and even our supplements here, we are not a store. We do not sell vitamins and we do not buy lab kits and sell them back to our patients. They are directly delivered from the lab companies. So if we sit there and do all this negotiation, we are not receiving full payment 
for the labs, we would have to then connect. My brain would have to literally put in the what the doll the extra dollar amount that a lab comp or that an insurance company uh, doesn't want to pay. And and obviously a business cannot do that. So the point is that is not how connect my brain generates its income. It generates its income through the services that we offer. So the point is there there's there's things that go on in looking at these tests. Now it's always worth an ask to your insurance company because I do realize you are paying for your insurance coverage every month. And I believe that you should be able to use it. Unfortunately, that is not the insurance industry. You have to look at the policy that you have been uh, either given or that you decided on. And that is going to tell you what is covered. Most of the time, the insurance company has elected to only use certain labs in certain situations. So this is why we are a nation that is getting sicker and sicker by the day. And now what's going on over at the World Health Organization, the, the risks are getting greater. If we lose our sovereignty to make our own decisions, it will become increasingly more difficult for people to get the information that they need about their body. It is so hard for parents to get adequate information, especially if we're just going down the traditional model of using an insurance company. This is one of the reasons why I do not process insurance in my office. You need functional tests to tell you what is really going on inside your child's body or even your own. Traditional labs are changing the within normal limits every year based on who took the test. That is comparing you to averages. And this is why children are getting sicker and sicker. And I've been doing this 28 years. I can tell you, I see it. So for example, if we get a stool test, we're able to see markers of what is the environment inside of the body. How is it eliminating? You can get an organic acid test and look at urine and see how the body is eliminating. And the markers will tell you where the greatest risks lie. And then you can put together a protocol. You can also look at food sensitivity. A lot of people have many different feelings about food sensitivity. Allergy and food sensitivity are two different things. Allergies, you would already know on your child. But sensitivities are letting you know how I'm reacting to a wide number of foods. And when the test comes back, usually what I see is there are a mountain of food sensitivities and different degrees. Now, many of these foods are perfectly great foods, but if the belly is sick, it begins to react upon itself like an autoimmune storm. And so because we do this, we're able to go, hey, look at how your child is reacting to broccoli, pineapple, chicken, red meat, potatoes, things that we know are not bad, but your child's belly is sick. And so if we don't heal that belly, it's very difficult 
to then support the system. So in the beginning, we have very set protocols that we use in order to heal the belly first. And we do not put in a mountain of supplements because if the belly is sick and you're throwing a lot of supplements into the belly, it isn't getting in there. If we just got done talking about the protective mechanism of the microvilli and it's breaking down and we now, we don't have these tight junctions between each of those little villi because the longer there's dysbiosis, the longer there's inflammatory processes, normal healthy structures are going to be destroyed and big molecules are going to leak right through there. And leaky gut can turn into leaky liver and can turn into leaky brain. It is so important to look at the microbiome. And when you match it up with the child's history and you begin to see this child went through ear infections, this child went through strep, this child's been on multiple antibiotics, this child went through this, went through this, during the same time that their little gut was trying to mature, we wired together a reaction that that little body right now only knows how to be sick. That's a very dangerous place to be. So if you've tried certain things and you've made great gains, then stick with it by all means. But if you continue down a path and you've started when your child was three, your child was five, you kept going, your child's eight, you're continuing and you're not getting anywhere. I want you to think about Connect My Brain. We get to the root cause of the problem. We lift up those rocks and we look underneath where many other people don't. We try very hard to navigate that path small in the beginning. And then if we have to add more, you can always add more. But start with the basics. Start with how that gut is functioning. If your child is matching up with having one or two illnesses and something's going on, several illnesses and things are going on, and things are not moving forward, it's time to do something different. This is a great opportunity during the summertime. The summer is a snapshot in time. It's a great chunk of time to really work on your child and allow them to heal, learn new lifestyles, learn how to do things differently that are still tailored to how your family enjoys eating and, and doing whatever it is that you want to do. We're not, we're not looking to change your whole world, but we want to educate you because this is a very important part of ensuring that your child is going to go forward. Maybe this speaks to you a little bit. You know, I listened to a conference that was all on the microbiome years ago. And there's a lot of research that is now even associating the microbiome and cancer. That even though we may get it in our pancreas or our intestine or our liver or wherever, the microbiome has an enormous influence on the health of your entire body. I encourage you to think about 
where is your state of health and where do you want it to go? Where is your child's state of health and where does it need to go? Please feel free to reach out to me on connectmybrain.com. You can send me a message that you'd like to connect. Please let me know when you're available so that we can get together as fast as possible. You are welcome to call the office, 678-501-5172. We can get on the phone and chat. If we don't answer, leave a message. I promise we will call you back. The gut is our foundation. Just like I've talked in the past about the neurological foundation of the vestibular system, the eyes, the ears, it needs gut health in order to ensure that it has the fuel to stick. If you haven't looked at this part of your child's health or your health, now is the time. Be blessed.